In this video, I am going to create or add on to the demo application that we've been uh, working with. Um, in a previous uh, lecture, I had put together, uh, we had talked about model view controller. And what we're going to do here in this example is create a, a sample controller. Um, and then I want to show how that fits into the, uh, the infrastructure or into the um, into the files that get generated and how that relates to just various things that we saw in that uh, in that previous lecture in regards to routes and the controllers uh, and the view uh, we won't be looking at models this go around um, but certainly the uh, the controllers and the view and the routes are, are going to be a part of what we'll see here okay so let me go ahead and get started um, so here we have uh, the the demo directory, we've got, uh, I wanted to show two things here. There's the controllers and the views that um, are, are or were automatically generated by the, uh, by the rail system when we created the application. Uh, and I, I do want to remind you that uh, in this version here, I'm doing this in Rails 5. Um, also that uh, I, had, I had created this application so that we could use it with um, uh, with Postgres SQL. So here's the command I'm going to execute. Uh, it's Rails generate controller say hello goodbye. Uh, let me explain what's here. So Rails generate controller is the piece that we're using to tell Rails to create um, some controller um, files for us, and these are going to be uh, found once we generate this in the controllers and the views um, directories. Um, they're going to generate a few files there plus a number of other things. Um, we're saying here that we want the controller to be called say and that we want two actions to be associated with that. One called hello, one called goodbye. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this command and we're going to have a number of things get um, get executed. So here is the out for it. So we see that um, the, um, the controller was created uh, with a couple of things in it and we'll take a look at that here in a moment. Um, that some views were created. Um, so we see that um, a hello and a goodbye view were created. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, just a number of other things that are uh, uh, that were generated as part of what Ruby does, or sorry, what Rails does for us. So let's take a look at um, what was actually generated for us. The, um, uh, the say controller file. Uh, this was, uh, this is the main controller for, for the say, um, uh, controller, or this is the code for the say controller. Um, there are two actions that were defined in here. Um, one for what happens when when hello is executed, what happens when goodbye is executed. Right now, nothing. I um, do want to mention here that say controller is a subclass, that's what the less than tells us, of the application controller. So that's one uh, one piece here, and I, and I think I mentioned in the lecture that <clears throat> the views and the controllers are uh, are very intertwined, or at least they they are um, they are coupled with one another. Um, and so when we generate this controller, both the um, controller as well as the uh, uh, the views are generated. And so here we see there's a directory called say. And if I open that, <clears throat> you'll see the, uh, the two files. And so let me just open these. So the uh, the hello.html um, file is, is this. And this is just automatically generated. There's a .erb. Uh, remember, this is uh, it's embedded Ruby. And so we'll be able to add some, some Ruby code into this along with HTML um, to affect how it's displayed. Same thing goes with the goodbye file. So let's uh, let's go ahead and um, let me fire up the server, and let's see what happens in the 
uh, in the browser. Actually, I didn't want to do that there. I'll do it down here. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and say Rails. Actually, let me do it this way. Bundle set Rails server. Um, port. Uh, I'm running bundle exec first to make sure that all of the uh, all the gems are loaded and then it'll run rails um, and generate the server. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay and so uh, the server is running and I should be able to just execute it. And this is the same as what we saw before but I'm going to Let's take a look at what's actually in those files, or what happens when I display this. So here is the um, that HTML file. And I want to point something out here. If you notice the path, say hello, um, that's going to be important later once we start to look at routes. Um, but that's where uh, this hello uh, HTML is, and let's. Also do the same thing with goodbye. So there's the there's the goodbye file. All right, so that's you know interesting, but also very boring. Let's <clears throat> let's do something to this uh, this hello file so that um, so it has you know at least some dynamic information. Um, so let me add. And actually, let me modify this so that um, when um, uh, when the page is rendered, we're going to we'll see a time. So it is now. So I'm going to add this, and here's some embedded Ruby. <clears throat> so I'm going to give it the time um, uh, time class and. And tell it to give me the, the current time. Um, so what this is going to do is when the page is rendered, when the HTML is rendered, this uh, this bit of code is going to, to pop in and it's going to display the current time. All right, so let's do this. I'll save the file. Um, let's go back to the hello page and see what's generated there. Did I? Oh, I put it in the goodbye file. Sorry. Goodbye. Let's do that. So there it is. So say goodbye. It says it is now, and then this is uh, this is the time. Okay. So um, that anyway. So that's uh, that's at least mildly interesting, right? So we've got um, this being rendered in the view, but this is a this is a view controller, and and really what we'd want to do is have all the logic. Uh, located in the actual controller code. We want that to show up here. So, or at least part of well, what gets displayed um, in the, uh, uh, to appear here in the controller. So let's, um, let's change this by, uh, in, uh, let's say, in the goodbye section, I'm going to add a variable called time. And I'm going to set that equal to that time dot now, um, which uh, I had introduced into the other file. And um, and now instead of uh, putting the the time object here, I'm going to use the variable. Um, so I'm going to set that then to uh, to this at time variable. Okay, so. Um, now, you know, this should do exactly the same as it did before, but now what we're, we've done is we've put the, uh, the executing code, or at least the, the, um, the interesting piece of this uh, here in the goodbye file. Now, you know, there are several reasons why we would want to do something like this. And the, the text talks about this, how, um, you know, we might want to format the text based on uh, localization rules if we're, you know, if this is an application that's being used. Uh, in different countries, for instance. So let's uh, let's go ahead and rerun this, and it shouldn't change anything. So it's still displaying the uh, 
the time, but now that is being used or at least being defined within the controller um, under the action uh, relevant for goodbye. Um, so anyway, that's, uh, that's that's part of the way that uh, uh, that Ruby allows us to um, separate concerns uh, across various parts of the um, of the application. So instead of having uh, everything either contained in the HTML file or everything in the controller, um, we can uh, we can split the uh, split the concerns. And so you can imagine that. Now, if this controller is really meant to be communicating with the database, um, then uh, we could do things like queries here to pull the relevant information, throw them into variables, and then display them or render them in the uh, in the relevant uh, view um, in the uh, embedded Ruby. Um, okay, so one more thing that I want to talk about, it's um, this idea of routes. So I'm going to go to a different file. I wanted to show this. Uh, it's under config and routes.rb file. So one of the things that was generated when we did the controller, uh, the generate controller, was these two um, um, uh, these two commands. So get, say hello, and get, say goodbye. So when I put this location in here, uh, what that is doing is uh, it, it's basically provide, um, being defined by, uh, by Rails here. Um, now there is somewhere else in the application where this then gets resolved um, to a um, a specific uh, URL so that um, um, so that the pages can be rendered well not just rendered but then displayed and they can be they can be browsed to if you will so <clears throat> um, there is a way in the um, in the views to be able to access these uh, these paths without having to refer to them specifically um, but rather by um, by an abstract name. So I'm going to, for instance, I'm going to show how this works. I'm going to change our goodbye file um, and add in some text that says time to say. And then instead of, uh, well, what I want to do is add a link here to the hello file. So I'm going to do this with some Ruby. And there's this uh, command called link to which allows me to uh, um, provide uh, what would essentially be in one of those A tags within HTML. But to do this with Ruby, and instead of me having to know the full URL to a particular, uh, to a particular, particular page or, or an action, um, I'm just going to use Ruby to help me resolve that. So it's going to say, Link to goodbye, um, and then say, actually, link to hello, and say hello path. And what's happening here is that Ruby um, and the Rails generate will automatically create this path for me and put it in a name called, say, hello path. Now I don't need to know what it is, I just need to know that it exists. Um, and so I, for instance, don't really need to know that this path exists here, but rather I can just use the abstract name for it. Um, and when I do this and I run it, then Ruby will do all these, these uh, um, um, translations for me and resolve those links. Um, and so as I then go to the relevant page, I click on that link, it brings me to the appropriate page. So, um, and, and that's actually, again, just um, one of the conveniences of Ruby, of being able to take uh, the paths that are here, these, these routes that are in the, the route file, and then provide um, the developer with, um, with convenience um, variables or, or um, uh, you know, representations of those URLs so that we can um, 
could do things like link to them with uh, uh, with some Ruby code. Anyway, so that um, that concludes uh, this video. Um, we will obviously be building these things out, um, and, and you'll be doing some exercises that uh, do this kind of thing. Um, but um, for now, um, that concludes this this video.